Good evening, this is Jeremy Buckles, a senior forecaster here at the National Weather Service Office in Morristown, Tennessee, with an update on our severe weather potential for Saturday, especially Saturday evening into Saturday night. First of all, a quick look at the rest of tonight. Uh, we're going to have a warm front, or kind of a boundary, uh, surging northward late tonight and early Saturday morning. Looks like a lot of rain and perhaps a few thunderstorms will also uh, develop into northern middle Tennessee, but we'll also have some isolated uh, showers and some thunderstorms across portions of eastern Tennessee and perhaps southwest Virginia late tonight, early Saturday morning, probably before sunrise. Really don't expect a lot of coverage out of this uh, precipitation, but if any of these thunderstorms do manage to form along the boundary, there is enough instability that we could have some of them get strong, maybe severe, uh, but the risk is low. If they do become severe, the primary risk out of them late tonight will actually be hell. Uh, could have some isolated cells with some uh, quarter size or one inch diameter hell um, with those. Now on Saturday we're going to have very breezy conditions across that entire area during the afternoon hours. Uh, low level wind field is going to increase substantially uh, during the afternoon. So we're going to see wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles an hour across the entire area. Uh, higher gusts are expected across the higher elevations of the mountains. Really above 4,000 feet is that main area. And could have some gusts of 60, perhaps 70 miles an hour above 4,000 feet elevation on Saturday afternoon and evening. And for that reason, we have a high wind warning in effect for the mountains, once again, mainly above 4,000 feet elevation, uh, parts of Monroe Mountains, and, the, and then the Smoky Mountains of Blunt, Severe, and Cock Counties. Uh, this could potentially impact you if you're headed over the mountains using US 441 uh, through Gatlinburg over the mountains into North Carolina. Um, so just be aware of that on Saturday afternoon and evening. Now, later Saturday evening, we're going to have a cold front starting to approach the area from the west. Now, there is a lot of shear in the uh, atmosphere. We have a lot of very strong wind dynamics in place. And so this is going to mean a line of thunderstorms developing and moving eastward through the evening hours, probably... Um, around 7 p.m. to 3 a.m. is the primary kind of time uh, for our region, probably approaching our western areas, uh, kind of the southern plateau around 7 or 8 p.m. in the evening, and moving eastward through the rest of the night. Once again, damaging winds will be the main risk with these thunderstorms. However, with the amount of shear in the atmosphere, as long as we have enough instability, we could also get a few quick spin-up tornadoes, mainly in the enhanced risk area, and I would say the greatest risk is going to be across the southwestern portions of our area. So anywhere kind of south of Interstate 40, um, across the southern plateau, southern valley, these areas, that's going to be the highest risk uh, during the evening hours for perhaps um, a tornado or two developing along that line, uh, especially as that line of storms moves through. If you see, you know, we can see any of these Boeing segments uh, moving out away from the line, that's where uh, some tornadoes could potentially spin up. So we'll be watching that closely through uh, the evening hours on Saturday. With this line of storms, large hail doesn't appear uh, to be a really main risk. We could have some isolated areas uh, that receive some one inch or quarter size hill with the strongest storms, especially if we could get a few cells, you know, thunderstorms to develop out ahead of the main line. If we got some isolated cells that managed to develop ahead of the main line, these would be the ones that we would most be watching for any potential hill issues. And then also could have some localized flash flooding possible. 
the rain will be moving through pretty quickly uh, overnight, but heavy rain rates uh, will lead to some localized flash flooding, especially in those flood prone areas. So, always know where to go if a tornado warning is issued. Always have a plan in place. Uh, make sure to seek shelter in an interior room. You want to be away from windows on the lowest level of your house. If you don't have a basement, just an interior room with no windows is a great place to seek shelter. If you do have a basement, you want to be down there. You want to be on the lowest level of your house if a tornado warning is issued. Also, definitely want to encourage you to have multiple ways to receive any kind of watches and warnings on Saturday and Saturday night. Uh, WIAs or wireless emergency alerts uh, on your cell phone is a great way. Weather radio is another great way. Um, but have multiple redundant ways of getting those warnings. Uh, remember that some of these storms will likely be moving through at night, so it'll be dark outside. Um, a lot of folks will be already going to bed or maybe already in bed. So make sure that um, you have those redundant ways to get warnings that could wake you up if you are asleep. And then looking ahead, uh, after the severe weather is over Saturday night, much cooler air starts to move in on Sunday afternoon and evening. And we do expect some rain to change over to snow. Now the big question is where exactly does the low pressure system, where does it track, and uh, exactly how quickly does that cold air arrive. And that'll make a big difference on potential snow amounts. Right now, not a lot of confidence in accumulating snow across the valley. Uh, it's just been too warm and we're going to have to get some pretty heavy snow rates uh, to get accumulating snow in the valley. So. Probably no snow to a dusting to a half inch across most valley locations at this time. Uh, the plateau, depending on how much moisture uh, is present, uh, could get up to a half inch to an inch, but even that's kind of uncertain because most of the moisture will be to our east. And that's where we get into the mountains. So the mountains along the Tennessee and North Carolina border. That is where we have the most confidence in seeing accumulating snow at this point. Uh, right now seems pretty reasonable to assume uh, based on uh, all of the guidance and uh, how things seem to be progressing that uh, portions of the mountains could receive two to four inches of snow primarily above 2,500 or 3,000 feet elevation. Uh, this is a system you know we'll continue to watch over the next couple of days and any minor little changes in the track of this system uh, will lead to some probably some pretty substantial changes in the snowfall forecast so just remember that forecasts are likely to change this is an uncertain situation uh, so continue to monitor the latest forecasts and updates from reliable sources uh, you can check us here at weather.gov forward slash mrx and also your local uh, tv meteorologists continue to tune it to them just make sure you know you're trusting a, a reliable source for weather information. I want to thank you for your time. Encourage everybody to stay safe. Remember to have multiple ways to receive any watches or warnings on Saturday afternoon, evening, and into the overnight hours. You can continue to follow updates on our website at weather.gov forward slash MRX. Also on our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube accounts.